Hey, what's going on, y'all? Uh, this is going to be another tutorial video where I go over how to make this painting in Procreate. Um, you can use whatever software you want if you feel like painting along, but I will be using Procreate on an iPad Pro. And the brushes I'll be using are going to be from this free brush pack that I have on my Patreon page, uh, as well as some other brushes that I have here. But uh, they're, they're all going to be pretty simple brushes, so nothing too complicated. Uh, as far as the canvas dimensions here i have a i'm using a 4000 pixel by a 2700 pixel canvas uh, and the color profile is an srgb as you can see there uh, and so with that said we can get into it so the first thing i'll do here is um, i'm gonna get in a blue sky so i'm gonna uh, I'm just pull out this color palette here and i'm gonna sample a uh, blue color here just a pretty light saturated color for the sky and get this in and then i'll have a lighter lighter transition downwards so um so more of a desaturated lighter blue on the bottom portions of the canvas here and so now i have a sky layer in i'm going to go up to the settings and turn on a drawing guide and i just want to get a perspective grid in here just something simple uh, just so i know where the horizon line is so i'm just going to tap on edit drawing guide and uh, tap on the perspective tool and then i'll just tap on the screen to get a vanishing point in and uh, the blue horizontal line is really what we need here which is the horizon line or the eye level of where the viewer's eye uh, is level to the horizon so i'm going to put this line somewhere about i say somewhere about here so a little bit higher than halfway up the canvas and i'm not going to worry too much about the vanishing points right now we could do a two-point perspective for this scene, but I guess we can do that. I'll move this vanishing point out here on the right side of the canvas, and I will tap in along that blue hor uh, horizontal line. I'll tap in to get a second vanishing point in. So now we have a two-point perspective uh, grid here. And the second point I'll leave somewhere over here, I think, should be fine. And just make sure that this horizon line is... Uh, is horizontal we don't want it to be like tilted like this um, if you have a tilted horizon line then it would be like the camera is tilted and you can get some dynamic shots by doing this but in this case just for this tutorial i'm going to keep it straight so i'll have my grid set up something like that should be fine um all right so now that we have a grid in i'm going to actually turn down the opacity just so i can see more of the canvas and so that the grid is less opaque and I'll make a new layer above this sky layer, and I'm just going to start painting in some mountains in the very far background now. So I'll get a, so kind of this mid-tone blue color here, and I'm just going to start painting in a mountain. And the reason this mountain is blue is because of atmospheric perspective. So um, I know I've mentioned this before in other tutorials, but for those maybe who are new here, or just to kind of uh, remind you, uh, atmospheric perspective makes things usually lighter and uh, more blue if it's a blue sky so i'm just painting this mountain in here getting in this shape and then i'm going to paint in everything below it all the way down to the bottom of the canvas here and just maybe refine the shape a little bit more of these mountains and just keep on cleaning that up until you get something that you like all right so now i have a mountain shape in here now the next thing i'll do is make a new layer above layer two and I'm going to get in some grass hills and kind of the foreground area. In fact, before I do that, I'm going to go up to the drawing guide. I'll actually move this horizon line down a little bit. I think it was too high there now that I got those mountains in. So I'll move it down to about just under midway of the canvas. I'd say just below the midway point. Uh, I should be fine. Just wanted to change that up. And uh, all these things are adjustable since we're doing digital art here so there's no need to worry about about committing to anything or about being too precious with anything uh, so like i said i'll make a new layer in uh, above layer two and i'm gonna get in some foreground hills or these kind of foreground fields so to do that i'm going to select a warmer green so if we're in a green section the warmer greens would be closer to the yellows and the oranges and the reds so a warmer green or maybe like a yellow green kind of color and we want it to be more saturated and lighter as well and i'm just going to start painting in with this uh, with this brush here along the bottom parts of this canvas and just get in these hill shapes so something like this maybe we'll get some more yellows in here 
And the closer the grass comes to the viewer, uh, so the closer to the bottom of the canvas, I want to get in some uh, more green colors rather than these yellows. We want it to be more green. So maybe something like this. And you could use any brush to do this. I'm just using this flat paint brush that I have included in this brush pack. Um, and I'll leave the link for these brushes in the description. Again, they're free. Uh, but this brush has like this nice kind of uh, grass texture. If you paint up, you can get these grass blades in there. Uh, but again, you could use any brush to do this really. All right, so I'll just keep on adding, uh, adding some subtle color variations to these hills right here. And we want to keep on building up the shape and the silhouette. And that's really what I'm focused on right now is the silhouette and the shape of this hill. So when choosing color, uh, for example, for this hill, I got in this originally this local color of this kind of yellow green color. And then I started adding some variations to that color. So you see more of a green color here. You see some more of these lighter yellow colors down here. And we even see some uh, some more darker yellows right here. And so that's usually how I handle objects. I usually get in the local color and then I start to get in some uh, some variations, some subtle variations. We don't want it to be too drastic, but um, it's good to start simple, start with a solid color and then get in some some subtle variations from that. And that's usually what I try to do. So when thinking about color, I'm usually thinking about temperature. So like I mentioned earlier, the uh, the warmer greens that I was talking about would be closer to the yellows. And so usually that's what I have in my mind. So the bottom of the screen here, like these, uh, these greens down here are cooler than these yellows up here and these greens up here. I don't really think of colors like, for example, in names like lavender or cyan or anything like that. Um, I usually think of it like a cooler green or a warmer red or a cooler red or a warmer blue. That's how I think of color. So um, now I've uh, created a clipping mask layer on this back mountain and I'm just getting in these uh, some more colors onto this blue just so I can add some more, uh, some, start to get some form into here and make these mountains feel like they're three dimensional and like they like they have some, uh, like they take up space in a three dimensional in a three dimensional space. So I'm just using this neutral blue and uh, maybe I'll get some greens in here now. So we'll just push this slider into the greens. And, um, and I know it's not actually green. This is more still a blue, but you can see this actually kind of reads as a green uh, because it is closer to the greens and everything else around it is much cooler. So that kind of influences uh, this color here to feel more like a green. On top of that, it's more of a neutral color as well. So, um, so it will look more like a green compared to everything else around it. Uh, that's one thing about colors that's interesting and kind of important to, to remember is that colors are really influenced by the surrounding elements. Um, so you can have this same color, like for example, if I take this color and let's paint it up here in the scene. Now you can see this looks more, much more like a blue down here because it's surrounded by a much warmer color in this yellow. And, uh, and up here, this same color that we used up here, if I sample it, it's the exact same color, but up here it looks much more green and that's because the surrounding elements are more of a cooler color. Uh, so you can see that color is really, like I mentioned, influenced by the surrounding temperature and the surrounding elements. So just keep that in mind when, uh, when choosing color. And it's, it's okay to test, you know, to sample, put down some color in the canvas and see what it looks like and see how it reads with everything else around it. So I'll just continue to get in some of this form on these mountains. And uh, this blue that I've gotten down, this darker blue for the original local mountain color, uh, the local color of the mountain is gonna be like the shadows. So I'm using that color as the areas of the mountain that are in shadow. And then I'm just kind of painting in the areas that are being hit by light on top of that. And we're just, I'll be working on this and adjusting some of the shapes as well throughout, but um, I'm really just trying to start off by getting some shapes in. And often that's what I'll do is just try to get some simple shapes in and then keep on refining those. So like right now, it doesn't really read that well. It doesn't really make too much sense what's going on, but um, the more that I start to refine these shapes and start to clean these up, hopefully the more this will read as a mountain. All right, so we've got some 
colors on this mountain now. I'm going to move on to, uh, I think I'll move on to maybe above the mountain. So I'll make a new layer above the mountain layer here. And I'm going to get in some trees between this hill and uh, between these mountains in the background. So to do that, I'll just sample this green down here. Since we already have some colors on the canvas, we can just sample this and I'll make it a little darker and maybe a little cooler. And I'll just start to paint in some trees, maybe a little less saturated than that. And I'll just get in some shape of like a tree line right here between these hills and this mountain. So just building this up, I'll switch brushes from time to time. Again, you feel free to use whatever brush you want. It really doesn't matter if you are following along. All right, I think this shape is good. And then we can start to get some more texture on that shape. So usually what I'll do, as you may have noticed already, is just paint in a basic shape using a local color. So for example, for these trees, I just use this green here. It's a darker, more of a neutral green, so it's not very saturated, but um, I'm using that as kind of a base or a placeholder. And then on top of this, what I, what I can do is make a new layer and set it to a clipping mask and then take this green and just make it a little more saturated and maybe a little warmer. So push this green more towards the yellows and I just start painting in on the side of the trees that is going to be receiving the lighting. And so the lighting in this scene is going to be coming from this way. So it's going to be coming from the right side of the canvas down across, across the scene like that. And, um, and so I'll just uh, knowing where the direction of the lighting is coming from, I can just start to paint in some of the lighting on the trees here. And maybe I'll shift the color a little bit more yellow, get some more saturation into there, just to have some variety. Not all trees are going to be uh, the same exact color. There are going to be some slight variations within those trees. So, And so that local color that I painted earlier, this darker green, now becomes like almost like the shadows. So it's very similar to what I did with this mountain here. I just got in a base local color, and then I just start painting in the lighting on top of that shape. So I'll take a break from these trees as of now, just to move on to something else. And I'll go back to layer three, which is this hill layer. And I'll just keep on building up some of this shape. So I'm thinking maybe get some more yellows or maybe some more warmer colors in here. And um, just slowly building up texture. So the shape is pretty much fine for me right now. It's pretty much how I want it to be. Let me just add on a little bit to it here. But, but yeah, the shape is about good. Now I'm just kind of adding textures and refining the shape that I have down. Maybe I'll get in a lighter yellow like this and um, just paint kind of this horizontal hill going in, uh, going across like this, just to have more of a, some more form onto these hills. So just to further explain the color theory that I mentioned earlier with the color temperature, uh, just to do a quick little explanation how I showed that this color up here with the surrounding cooler colors looked much different uh, when we painted it down here in the warmer colors. So to further kind of go off of that, on the color wheel here, these are usually considered to be the cooler colors. So these purples, the blues, and even some of these greens here. And the warmer colors would be like this yellow, oranges, and reds, sometimes even some of these pinks. Um, but with that said, it's not always as simple as that. So color theory is relative. And I mentioned that earlier, but what I mean by that is, so if I turn off the color palette here and we just focus on what appears on the screen, uh, this color that we painted earlier looks like a warmer color. It reads as a warmer color compared to this blue shadow here. So if I was to say what's the warmer color and what's the cooler color in this area, I would say uh, this is a warmer color and this would be a cooler color because this feels more like a warmer green and this feels like a much more cooler shadow area. But what's interesting is that if I take this same color here, sample this warmer, so-called warmer color that we talked about, and we look at it on the color palette, it's actually in this area. So it's actually traditionally considered a cooler color, but uh, in this scenario, it's a warmer color compared to this shadow blue. So that's what I mean when I say that color is relative. So this appears to be warmer, although if we get in an orange right next to it, like this, 
Now this orange is the warmest color and this is actually much cooler than this orange. If we remove the orange, now this green becomes much warmer uh, than these blues. So that's what I mean by it's all relative. Uh, to, further, to further add on to that, if I sample this color here, uh, if I paint it in over here with these yellows, it looks a lot more like a blue than it does right up here. So you can see this, these look like two different colors like we talked about earlier. Uh, and in this case, this would be a much cooler color compared to these surrounding yellows. So the color temperature would actually look something like this. We'd have the cooler color there and then the warmer color around it. And so you can see that it flipped from this color up here being the warmer color to now the same exact color in a different scenario or in a different relative situation is now the cooler color. And the surrounding color is the warmer one. These yellows are warmer and this blue up here is cooler. So that's what basically what I mean by saying that um, color temperature is relative. So understanding that really helped me understand um, colors on a new level that I hadn't before, rather than just associating it by a name, rather than just kind of uh, looking at a reference image for colors, understanding a color temperature and how that works really helped me see things on a deeper level, I think. So try to get familiar with that. So yeah, hopefully that tip is helpful. That's just Again, something that I found to be really helpful. And I could talk much more about that as well, but I'm going to try to keep this video focused on this painting here. All right, so with this hill, uh, these yellow grass hills in this foreground here, they look okay. I'll get in some trees now, so I'll make a new layer above that, and I'm going to sample this dark green that we used for these, uh, these tree shadows back here. And I'll just get in some trees uh, closer to the viewer. So these are going to be much bigger trees. I'll get in one right here. I'm just painting in the shape right now. And um, we can change the color later if needed. But I'm just kind of going back and forth with this paint stroke here to get in this tree. And then I'll add on to the tree using the selection tool. And just kind of refine some of the shape up here. Just to have it feel more graphic. So something like that. Maybe I'll erase some of the, uh, the shape that I just put in just to clean up some of that even further. And I'll do the same thing right next to it. So I'll just use the selection tool again and just get in this graphic shape for these trees here. And I'll just paint that in. And now we have some silhouettes of some trees right here. Maybe we can adjust them if needed. Maybe pull them down a little bit. Or maybe I'll just shorten them a little bit here. I feel like it was starting to get too close to the top of the canvas right here. So I just shrink that down and I'll get some more back here a little bit further back. And these trees will be a little bit shorter because they're a little bit further back in the scene. And I can just paint that in right there. I think that works fine right now. We've got these silhouettes in again, starting with a local color, and then we can always add uh, detail and form to these trees later. But as of now, I think those shapes work. So now that I know where these trees are, I'm just going to continue building up some texture on the canvas. I, I just wanted to place them in just to know where the composition is going to be set up. And now I'll go back to layer four, which is this clipping mask layer on these mountains. And I'm going to keep on painting in some form on these mountains here. So when dealing with the shadow on this mountain, I kind of talked about this earlier, but I just want to further explain what I mean. Uh, this the shadow for the mountain is this one color here, this darker blue color. And I don't want to get more complicated than that, because if I start to add in stuff like this and we start to get a bunch of different values for the uh, for the shadows like this, it'll start to feel a little noisy and messy. And uh, and we don't need to do all of that. So. Like I talked about earlier, atmospheric perspective doesn't only just make things more blue or cooler. It also makes things uh, less detailed. So we're not going to see all of the different value shifts on the shadow side of the mountain. And so I'm choosing to simplify them by just sticking to this one cooler blue color. Uh, so the lighting, the part where the light is going to hit, you see I have this this color here sampled and I have this kind of this gray blue up here and I've got this darker gray blue as well. So we get more color variety because there's sunlight hitting this side, but in the shadow, 
I'm choosing to group everything and choosing to um, simplify. Uh, so that's, I guess, the takeaway here is to try and simplify areas that can be simplified. If you don't need to add variety or if you don't need to add a, a ton of different values, then you may not want to because because things can start to get start to get confusing and complicated pretty fast when painting. So simplification is really going to be key in trying to uh, make sense of things. Now, with that said, for the shadows, I will start to add in just a subtly darker uh, part of the shadows down towards the bottom, just because that's starting to get closer to the viewer. But these are probably the only two values that I'll use for these shadows, uh, at least for now in the beginning. So for the top of this mountain here, the tallest point of this mountain in the background, I'll add a warmer color because right now everything on this mountain is cooler colors. So I'll just sample this gray and I'll just push it more neutral and I'll just paint in with some of that. And this gray, even though it's still technically a blue color, if we sample it, you see on the palette here, it's still in the blues. It actually looks like it's almost like a yellow color. And that is exactly what I was talking about earlier with the color temperature being relative. So if I sample this same color that we were just using, it looks like a warmer gray. If I sample that and I paint it within these yellows, now it looks like a much cooler gray. And this color here and this color up here are the exact same color, but they look completely different. This one up here looks much warmer and this one down here looks much cooler. So my point with that is if I would have taken this blue and instead of just pushing it to right here, if I would have, I, you, you can kind of overdo it. So if I would have pushed this into the yellows and actually said, oh, I want a warmer color on this mountain. So let's push it into the yellows. And if I would have done that, then it may have started to feel too, too warm. So you don't always need to make the most drastic change when, when dealing with color. Sometimes the subtle changes can get you what you need. So in this case, I needed a warmer color. I didn't even pull it out of the blues. I just made the color more neutral. And in doing so, the relative temperature felt warmer, but it actually wasn't, uh, it wasn't in the yellows at all. So I'll just work on this mountain here and I'll speed up the video, but I'll just be working on textures and form, just trying to build up how these hills are gonna look and how the lighting is gonna be hitting the, the mountains. All right, so with some texture and form built up on this mountain, I think I'll move on to uh, something else. So I'll go to the sky layer and I'll make a new layer above it. So now we're behind this mountain layer and I'm gonna paint in some more mountains in the background. So for this, I'll just sample this shadow color that I've used, this cooler shadow color there, and I'll make it even more saturated and just slightly lighter. And I'll just paint in uh, some mountain shapes there on the right side and on the left side as well back here just to get more depth in the scene. So the more layers, the more layers of mountains that we have, the more depth and the uh, more expansive that this scene is gonna feel. So, so that's why I'm doing that. And right here, they, th these background mountains kind of feel like they're merging to these, to these mountains right here that we were just working on. So to separate those further, I'll make a new layer above layer eight and I'll you just use an airbrush and I'll sample this sky color here and I'll just paint in along the base of those background mountains, just some atmosphere. And so now this kind of pushes those further back in the scene. All right, maybe I'll make them a little lighter as, as well. So I'm just going to those mountains and making them lighter so they feel like they're even further back. So usually the lighter that we make objects, especially mountains, the lighter that they are, the uh, further back that they'll feel. So if we want to push them back in the scene, we don't have to always make them smaller. We can actually just change the value, make the value lighter. All right, so 
with that in, those mountains look pretty good. I'll go back to this tree layer. So I'll just collapse these layers and uh, go to layer five, which is this tree layer. Continue to build up some of these trees here. I'm gonna extend some of these shapes up and introduce some more colors as well. Maybe some more desaturated colors, some cooler blue greens. I feel like they could be a little taller. I kind of made some of them. We want to have some variety with these shapes. We don't want all the shapes to look the same. And uh, and I guess I'm just kind of introducing more variety here. Uh, with that, I can also use the selection tool here and get in some more graphic shapes to contrast with these painterly shapes. I'll just get a few of these in here. I'm just making some selections and then I'll paint those in. But that is uh, completely a stylistic choice. So. I do, if you're following along, do whatever, whatever you want, whatever you think looks good. So what I'm doing here is adjusting some of the shape of these hills because I want these trees to fit more nicely along these hills here. And um, so I'm just erasing some of the edges of this yellow hill. And then I'll go back to the tree layer and continue to refine some of the shape along there. Just get in some more of these shadows and really just working with these trees. I wasn't too happy with how they were looking, so just trying to fix some of that up and get it to a point to where I'm happy with. All right, so now with these trees in this mid ground looking better than uh, better than before, I think I'll start working on these trees closer to the viewer. So this layer seven, I'll make a new layer above it and set it to clipping mask and I'll just start to paint in some some uh, some texture and form onto these since they are just a flat color right now try to get some color and form into this so I'm just painting along the right edges really right now because that's where the lighting is going to be hitting and I'm just getting in some two values we have this darker value for the shadow and I have this lighter value for where I'm going to start to paint the lighting and I'm just going to refine that shape there. And then we can keep on building this up and get in another value here, maybe a little bit warmer, a little lighter and start to paint that in as well. Again, just along the right edges because that's where the sunlight, the direction of the sunlight is. And then finally I'll add an even warmer, closer to yellow green, just along some of the right edges. So not much, but kind of like a highlight. So just a little bit there. So what I can also do here is grab an airbrush and just paint along the right sides as well, just with that warmer color, maybe even more of a yellow. And this will kind of add a softer lighting effect on the sides. So I'll just keep on building this texture off of this tree and then after this, I think I'll move on to the to the grass, but I'll just work on this until I get it to a point where I like it. And then I'll be back in a moment. All right. So on the left side of these shadows of these trees, I want to get more of a blue color and paint some of that here. Uh, it's not too bright, not too high of a value. We don't want too much contrast, but I'm doing this just to indicate some um, some ambient light. So the skylight here is uh, blue, everything in the sky. And so the blue light actually comes down and fills in some of the shadow areas along the right sides of these trees. And uh, that's why that these shadow uh, portions of the mountain are blue on the left sides. And that's also why I wanna get in some blue on the left side of these trees here because there's no sunlight hitting the shadows so that the sky actually produces light from being lit from the sun and the sky is a very blue light source a cooler light source so it fills in those shadows with with a cooler blue color and um, that's kind of what i'm doing here it's not too strong it's definitely not as strong as direct sunlight so that's uh, something i want to take into consideration don't want it to be too vibrant or we don't want the value to be lighter than the than the sunlight side but it is a way to get more color into the shadows and to have more exaggerated realism into our into our painting as well 
because normally it may not be as strong as this. Like I may be exaggerating it a little bit here, but but when you're painting, you have the freedom to do that. All right, so these trees are looking better. They look more three-dimensional and they definitely have more texture on them. There's still some more things I wanna do, like we'll add some branches later on, but for right now, I think I'm gonna jump to the grass just to uh, start working on something else and take my mind off of the trees. So I'll go to the grass layer and I just wanna build in some more of this texture and form on, on this grass now. So just sample some of these greens and start painting along this uh, bottom portion of the canvas here and to get in some areas where maybe it's just grass. So I'm thinking this field has maybe some flowers. And so this area in the foreground is gonna be more of a green grass. Maybe we can get some darker values in here as well. What I could also do is I'll switch to, I'll go to the inking section on Procreate and there's a rake brush called the thylacine brush. And I'll just get some of these textures in here. I'll make a new layer just in case I need to redo or, or erase something. And I can just get these grass textures in here like this. And I'll just build this up right here as well using this lighter green value. Uh, the reason I'm doing this on a separate layer for one, like I said, is to erase things if needed or to if I don't like it, um, I can just delete this whole layer and uh, and there's no problem. But if I do it all on layer three, then things are going to start like I can't. Um, there becomes a point where I can't undo or I can't erase things without it being more complicated. So uh, if you're trying something new or if you're trying to just experiment with something, uh, making a new layer can be a good way to not have to fully commit uh, if you're not sure if it'll work out yet. All right, I'll continue go back to the grass layer and just build up some of the shape, continue to refine the shape. It's all, you know, all of this takes time and it takes a lot of patience as well. So um, just stick with it. If you're painting along, just try to stick with it and see see it start to develop um, because it, it does take some time and, and you may have to adjust some things that you painted earlier. You may have to adjust some colors or some values. You may need to clean up some shapes, but, um, but I think that's all part of the process because the more elements you get in a scene, the more paint that you get down on the canvas, the more you may start to realize that some things that you painted early on don't work anymore, or maybe they just could be improved or adjusted and so a lot of times i'll go back to certain areas and clean things up or adjust the shape as i did with this hill right here so when painting grass it can be a little tricky but uh, one thing I try to keep in mind that makes it a little easier for me is the areas in the foreground, so the areas up here, are going to be larger grass uh, brush strokes, and the areas back here can be much thinner and smaller grass brush strokes. On top of that, these areas can group, uh, the, the areas back here can be grouped a little bit more. So like um, this shape right here is all one value this shape right here is only a couple values two or three values right here um, this right here is all one shape and so i'm grouping these like this over here is all one shape as well on this grass i'm grouping this to try to simplify things um, whereas up here we have more smaller uh, intricate shapes and that's because these areas are closer to the viewer up here so we're able to see more of the details and and get away with that but if we did that same level of density back back here in the midground things will get a little detailed and too noisy so um, that's one thing that i try to keep in mind when painting grass is to just pay attention to the level of detail and to the uh, size of your your paint strokes and of course uh, your style will will dictate a lot of a lot of uh, how you paint so you may choose to have a lot of detail everywhere if that if that's your style but i find it to be more readable uh, just for my own paintings in particular to go with with what i had just mentioned 
So I'm starting to get into more saturated yellows now along this grass because up until this point, I had yellows down, but uh, I didn't feel like they were saturated enough. So I'm just kind of going on top of what I had painted and adding some more saturated grass. Maybe these, like I mentioned, maybe these are flowers. Uh, whatever the case is the saturated yellow color. So now I'm starting to get some smaller details in here for this grass. Maybe I can make a new layer. I do have a few layers for this grass, but you could do this all on one layer if needed. I just uh, keep some of my layers separate sometimes if I'm trying new things out, like I mentioned earlier. But um, just getting in some smaller details for like individual grass blades. And I'll make a new layer for that. So really mainly in this foreground is where I'm going to want to see some some of these small details like this along the base of, of this painting, along the base of the canvas. And what I can do is use an airbrush and just erase some of the bottoms just so that it has more of that gradient into the ground. And I'll do that there. And maybe I can move some of this around to group it better maybe something like this and what i'll also do is on the same layer i'll just start to get in some selections for grass so just have the selection tool and i'm just getting in these grass shape selections here and i'm going to paint all of these in a, in a moment uh, but for now just trying to make a bunch of these and then i can use an airbrush and softly paint along the tops of them and get in some grass like that. So just to further add to that grass feel in the foreground there. And I'll do that a little bit further up in the scene too, like this. I don't wanna, I wouldn't do this like past probably this area here um, because it will start to get too noisy. So like I mentioned earlier with keeping the, the details closer to the viewer, that's what I'm trying to do with this. Don't wanna go too far up in the scene. So I'll actually move this tree down just a little bit. I feel like it was too high. Um, I think that's a little better. Maybe I'll increase the size of it too, just slightly. Just making these small adjustments here. Everything on the scene is looking pretty good. I think the composition is pretty much in place. I wanna get some clouds in here at some point, but um, we'll do that in a moment. Um, in fact, I'll probably do that right now. We can go to the sky layer, make a new layer above it and just get in some clouds. So to do that, I'll just select a round brush and I will sample the sky color and push it close to white, something like this. And I'll just start to paint in some clouds, maybe behind this mountain right here, using a round brush to do this just to get some graphic cloud shapes in. But the, the goal here is to have these mountains pop out a little bit more. Uh, and I think adding some clouds behind them like this helps. And so I'll add texture to these clouds in a moment. But again, as pretty much everything else that I've done in this painting, just starting off with a local color. And I can follow this grid if I want. This, uh, you see this grid up here that we got in earlier. We can follow this to get some perspective on these clouds to have them feel like they're in a scene, make them feel a little more dynamic. So maybe something like this, I may take a few of these out later, like I may erase some of these if I feel like they're too, if I feel like I did too much, but um, right now that's, that's okay. I think that works right now. And what I can now do is make a new layer above that and set it to clipping mask. And I'm gonna get a warmer color here and just like a, warmer yellow orange it doesn't matter too much and just paint in the right sides of these clouds just to get some warmer colors in there to indicate that they are being hit by sunlight and so i'll just really just starting off with these two values here for the light and the for the light and the local color is really what i'm doing so we have this local color which is like this light pink and then i have the lighting which is this uh, yellow uh, very very light yellow and I may be able to get away with just doing these two values. I may not need anything else, but probably will need some shadow in here as well. Uh, so let's do that. Let's grab 
this, I'm gonna sample the local color here, this pink, and I'll make it just a little cooler and a little darker, not too much, but just enough to indicate some shadow, maybe even cooler than that. Something like this, I think should be good. And I'll just paint in some, some of the shadow sides of this. So I'm trying to keep these clouds simple. I'm only using three different colors. Like we have this local color, the lighting color, and then we have the shadow color. And uh, these clouds aren't really part of the focal point of this scene. So they're just, they're just here to complement things. Uh, and with that being the case, I don't want to spend too much effort or too much focus on them. Uh, because again, they're, they're not going to be a main element of the scene. They're just here to support everything else. And um, that's a thing about about uh, focal points, spend time on things that uh, are focal points, right? That, that are gonna be looked at and try not to worry too much about areas that are not important. Areas that may not matter too much in the end. If you spend a lot of time working on detail and trying to make those areas look good, then uh, you may find that it actually looks worse or you just wasted a bunch of time on something that wasn't necessary or both. So I, um, want to just keep these pretty simple for now. And I may come back to these clouds later on at the end when I'm cleaning things up. But um, I think I think for now we can move on. We've got some clouds in there. I think they work well. Uh, at least the shape does. As far as the texture, like I said, maybe we'll get back to that later. Maybe not. All right. So now what I'll do is go below these trees here and make a new layer. And I will set this layer to multiply mode, which is just going to help me make shadows. And I will make some selections. So I'll just make some selections under these trees and kind of going towards the left, kind of diagonal towards the left and complete that selection. And I'll do one over here for this tree as well in the same direction. And these are just going to be some shadows for these trees. I will grab a blue color here so like this neutral lighter blue and I'm just gonna paint in these these shadows here and maybe a little bit darker for this one up here and maybe a little bit lighter I'll just erase some of this one here just so it's not as dark since it's a little further back and I'll, I'll erase some of this as well and um, and yeah so now we have some shadows for those trees both going in the same direction uh, because again the sunlight is kind of coming down into the scene from the right side of the screen um, what i can do now is get some flowers on the scene so i have a new layer above everything else and i'm just going to draw in some selections for some flowers and we want these flowers to be a little bigger as they're closer to the bottom of the screen and the further up we go, they're gonna get smaller and smaller, but I'm just gonna make a bunch of these selections here and then fill these in in a moment. And just have some nice variety with them. We don't want them to be predictable. Try to get some irregularity with how they're placed and just have them scattered around. And then I will paint all of these in using a lighter, warm color. So something like this, get some flowers in there. Could have also done that with like a shape tool. If you have like a flower shape tool, for example, like, let's see if I can find it um, like this. You could just paint in flowers using a tool like this. Um, but I'm just trying to keep it simple here. Uh, so not everybody has a brush like this. So if you don't, you can still just get in some flowers using the selection tool. And you can make these flowers any color you wanted as well. So you could uh, set a clipping mask layer above them and just paint them. For example, we can make them red if I wanted which actually looks pretty good with the yellow and the blue for the sky. I kind of like the red. We might go with that, but uh, for now, I'll just leave them white. I like how the white flowers kind of uh, complement the clouds. The clouds are a lighter value as well. So I'll just keep, I'll just uh, stick with that for now. But it's one of those things that you can change pretty quickly if needed. So, um, but from here, I'll just keep on adding some texture to these trees in the foreground. Um, I'll definitely add some more texture to the grass, make sure that that starts to look a little bit better and clean up some of the clouds and pretty much go just go over everything, make some last minute adjustments and make everything look a little bit better. Um, but as far as major things, I probably won't be doing anything too major for the rest of this painting. Uh, these trees in the mid ground here like this here, I think is unclear what's going on. So like, let me let me fix that real quick. 
I just go in here and refine some of that shape just to make it more clear what's what I'm looking at because it was not clear that those were trees to me it looked a little messy um, but things like that is really what I'm talking about here just kind of going in and cleaning up some things making them more readable and um, and yeah just making everything look nicer but I'll speed up the, the rest of my progress on this and uh, in case you want to see what I do but um, yeah, hopefully this tutorial was helpful. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you watching. And um, as always, stay creative. <laughs>